I want you to, um, I think it's on the back, your, our vision. Yes, yes. All right, I want you all to read that vision together. Ready? Read. Stop. I want you to do it again, but I want you to read with enthusiasm. Ready? Read. Amen. We're going to be doing this quite often because this helps put us on one accord. We understand the direction of the church, then people can get on board and line up. And when we know the direction, when people get out of line, then we can help put them back in line. But if you don't know the direction of the church, then we can easily mislead and misguide other people. Because we really don't know. We're only assuming we're sending them to people we think that know and they don't know. And then they're misled and, and then they come back to you and trying to tell you the vision. And it's because you don't know it, you'll be misled. So we want to be on one accord. And in this uh, community, when we, we're talking about the church and our community and world, this is where Jesus came to impact. He, he came to impact the world. And in this world... We find our community, and we find our church. So you, let's get ready to roll here. Not rumble. Let's get ready to roll. <laughs> Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 7, verse number 20. Now when he had asked, now when he had asked, now when he was asked, rather, by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, here it is, or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God, everybody say kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God is within you. Now let's go to Matthew 6 and 31 for those of you who just couldn't find Luke 7, 20. Just jump on over to Matthew, you would be caught up. Matthew 6, 31 says, therefore do not worry saying what we shall eat or what we shall drink or what we shall wear. Understand the terminology that Jesus is using. Because what he's describing here, he's describing the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, you don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, and what you're going to wear. That's, so he, he's explaining something. So he says, for after these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom, because in the kingdom is the king responsibility to take care of what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, and what you're going to eat, and what you're going to put on. In other words, in the kingdom, you don't have these worries. That's what he's saying in God's kingdom. But we have a problem here. And the problem is the world is not under kingdom of God rule. Now, I know this, some people get shocked when you say, no, God is in charge of everything. Hold up. Adam sold this world out. And when Adam sinned, who had charge over this planet, this world, when he yielded to Satan, what happened was there was a shift in power. Well, once God controlled, Adam gave that control over to Lucifer. So that means there was a separation. And we're going to talk about this to give you a better understanding. I want to give you a synoptic view of our lesson today. And that is when God created this earth, put man on this earth, this earth was connected to heaven. The earth is, was considered a colony of heaven. And a colony is, is, is essentially, essentially a, an extension of the kingdom. God extended heaven on earth. He took an invisible kingdom and made it visible on earth and put man in charge as its king. 
small king. Okay, not the king, but small king. And so what happened when Adam sinned, that colony was disconnected. So when Jesus came, he came preaching the kingdom. Why? Because the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, these, the, the kingdom of earth, right, these two kings were now separated, and Jesus came to reconnect us. Yes. To give God rule and reign in the earth. Now, it hasn't been done physically yet. It has been done in the spirit realm. But the time will come when, all, when Satan will be bound, yes. all sin will be done away with. See, realize something. When God created you who was first formed in him, you are not an earthly being. You are a heavenly being placed in an earthly body to live on this planet. You were first in God, then you came to earth. So God made us for earth when it all ends up at the conclusion of everything, understand something, you are not going to spend eternity in heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see G. See, when we all get to heaven, you're not staying in heaven because you weren't created for heaven. We were created for earth. We will spend eternity on the earth. Because that is our domain. God is good. And so there has to be a reconnection going on. And when Jesus came and preached, he did something. Let me give you a definition of kingdom. A kingdom is a governing influence of a king over a territory. See, I've changed it a little bit so it's not the same as it was last week. Impacting it with his will. So it's a kingdom. A kingdom is a governing influence of a king. It's the governing influence of a king over a territory. Well, heaven's a territory. And God is king. And so God influences heaven. Don't you know God influences heaven? Whatever goes on in heaven, God knows about it. And they don't do nothing without his approval. One person tried it. One angel tried it. Okay. And he lost his citizenship. And he was knocked down to earth. So it's a governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with his will, his purpose, and his intent. Producing a citizenship of people who reflect the king's culture. Who reflect the king's culture. Therefore, a kingdom is literally a community of people with with a distinct culture. We have a culture, a distinct culture. Our culture is different than the world's culture. So when people see you, they should see you different. You should look different. Why? Because you're not of this world. We should talk different. Why? Because we're not of this world. We should look different. Now, some of us, we just want to blend in. We we don't want to be conspicuous. We want to blend in with everybody. So we want to wear what the world wears, look like what the world look like, smoke what the world smokes. <laughs> A little party don't hurt anybody. Just don't party hardy. It's okay to club. See, we, 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 want to, we, we don't want to separate. But you have to understand something. There's a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. You cannot live, you can't dress like, look like, act like, smell like, talk like, and participate like the world and be part of, ki- of the kingdom of God. Don't happen. There has to be separation. You're going to find out why. So all the kingdoms, now, now we're talking about a, a kingdom is literally a community of people with distinct culture. And a kingdom is a nation under a king's rule. A kingdom has a king. Now, the United States is not a kingdom. England is a kingdom because it has a queen. 
It has a leader. Now, in a democracy, we have a leader, but he is not a king. See, he's not a king. Only in a kingdom is there worship. There is no worship in democracy. Let that sink in. Okay? In a kingdom, there's worship. But in democracy, there is not. So in a kingdom, you worship who? The king. And his will, his desire. The king is not elected. In a government or democracy, he has a term. And he can only serve two ter- in our In this democracy, he can only serve two terms. The maximum he can serve is eight years. In a kingdom, the king serves for life. And since God is eternal, his kingship never ends. He is eternal. So a kingdom is a country where citizens reflect the life of the king. You should dress like the king. We should want to eat what the king eat. Let me tell you something. The Bible, when the Bible says a cattle of a thousand hills belong to the Lord, it's talking about the plenty of God. And if God has plenty, that means you should, you should, if we're his children. Because in the, when you look at the Bible, it talks about a king, but it also, also talks about the king's family. The family, ha- the, the king has children. He has a family. And the Bible calls us Heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Heirs mean we have rights that ordinary people don't have. So when we think ourselves of being citizens of the kingdom, we have to include that we're not just people. We're not servants. God never alludes to us as his servants as for having a a, a servant type of a character in that we, 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 they're only to serve him. No, he speaks of us as heirs, those of us who join in with him. We sit at the master's table. We don't serve the master. We serve with the master. And the Bible tells us we're heirs and join us with him. So Jesus tied us in. Well, we sit down at the table, people. We're not in the kitchen. <laughs> Get out the kitchen. Now go to Ephesians 5 and 1. Ephesians 5 and 1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. We're supposed to imitate God. In a kingdom, the subjects imitate the king. Let's go to Leviticus 19 and 1. 19 and 1. I have to move because I have some material to get, I have to give you. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, is holy. Because God is holy, we should be what? Now, we saw in Ephesians, we're supposed to imitate. We imitate God as dear children. So that means we're children of God. Do you see yourself as a child of God? Then as a child of the king, we're prone to worship. We're prone to worship the king. And because of the worship of the king, we get favor. Because we acknowledge him as king, we get favor. God gives us favor. You don't, we have to see ourselves different than other people. Different in the sense of what God has done in our lives. That's the only reference that I'm referencing here. Difference in the sense that we've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness and placed into the kingdom of his dear son. Difference in the sense that we call on the Lord of Lords and, and not just something. See, when some people uh, at, at pray, they just pray for something. They just pray to the air. We pray to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We pray to the creator of all men. We pray to him that is eternal and glorious. Amen. That's why we're different. 
And so it's, you have to understand your difference. It don't mean you, we're weird. It doesn't mean we walk around in a daze and, and, and we have this facade and, and people look at you and you're in this, oh, I'm, I'm, don't bother me, brother, right now. I'm passing for the Lord. You know, that's religious crazy stuff. You can fast with a smile on your face. When you fast, the Bible said, really, nobody should even know you're fasting. That means you should look normal, not look weird. You don't have to tattoo your body with the T-shirt saying, I'm going to heaven, da, da, da. People know by your lifestyle. Amen. Which direction you're going. Number two. When under a king's rule, you have no rights. When under a king's rule, you have no rights. See, in a democracy, well, we have rights, but you got to watch this. There's a problem with that. When you own rights, you own responsibility. When you have no rights, whomever you're under has a responsibility. There was a time when Israel did not have a king but God. But then they wanted a king like everybody else. They didn't want to be different. They severed, they, they had their independence day. We don't want God to be our king. We want, we want to elect a king. That's a problem already. And then God told them, he said, you know what your king is going to do? He's going to tax you. He's going to take the best that you have. He's going to put some of you in slavery. He lists all those things about the king. You know what they said? Yeah, but we want to be like everybody else. And so often, that's what Christians are today. You're trying to be like everybody else. And God said, look, if you want me to rule over you, this is what's going to happen. This is what I'll do for you. And sometimes we let our foolishness get the best of us. Under a king's rule, we have no rights because the kingdom rule is opposite to a democracy. You cannot say you follow Jesus and then claim to have your own rights. When you come to Christ, you are stripped of your rights. But you got to understand something. I think, ladies, you should best, you can, you, you can better in, identify with this. When you get married, that husband is supposed to take care of you. <laughs> I didn't tell y'all to say nothing. <laughs> you come under his covering. He protects you. You come from underneath your father's covering. You come under his covering. He's supposed to take care of you, love you, provide for you, make sure that your needs are met. You shouldn't have to do it for yourself. Let me correct that. You're not supposed to do it for yourself. Now, this don't mean that you both can't work if you want to work and enjoy life. It doesn't mean that at all. It has nothing to do with working. It has to do with position. When you position yourself under somebody, then the person that you position yourself under is now responsible for you. Dennis is responsible for Alicia. If she says, boy, I'm through working, I don't want to work no more, I'm coming home, and I'm just going to chill out. Right. <laughs> uh, I, see, I see how to get Alicia to raise her hand in church now. <laughs> Brother Dennis has started, you know, he has started saying, okay, okay, I hear, I hear you, sweetheart. Now, he, his wheels got to get to turn here, he says, I'm working two jobs. He's about, I better call him McDonald's. Because <laughs> I'm responsible to bring in money into this household to take care of my family. Now, you do work together. And things make it a lot easier when two people are working. I understand that. But it still doesn't take away from his responsibility, my responsibility to this woman. You see, you understand that? Because we're connected. But now... If she disconnect, if first lady said, look, I'm tired of being pastor, married to pastor. I don't want to be married to that good man no more. 
<laughs> Amen. I'm going out on my own. Guess what? I don't have to pay for anything for her anymore. Now, she has certain, uh, under law, she has certain things under law, but I don't have to give her no more than what the law requires. I'm not, repri- I'm not required to build, have a house for her. I'm not I'm pr- I have a car for her, food or anything. I give her a check. Okay, and if I'm any good, I'm going to give her the least amount as I can. <laughs> Love you, baby. Now she know don't even think about leaving, praise God. That old stingy boy. <laughs> now, so when, once we come to Christ, you don't have rights. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Because now the Holy Spirit, he said, I will lead and guide you to all truth. You ain't got to figure out truth. I'll lead and guide you to all truth. I'll show you things that will come to pass. The Holy Spirit is our helper in the earth realm. When any time a colony is established, and remember, a colony is an extension of a kingdom. So at one point, and I'm going to give you a little history lesson in a moment. At one point, the United States was part of Great Britain. We were connected, and they sent the people left Great Britain, and they came to America and colonized, but they were still connected to Great Britain. And what Great Britain does, Great Britain don't let you run your government. Great Britain sends representatives from that kingdom to come here and run the country. Anytime they colonize, whether uh, uh, some of you that came from the islands, you understand uh, colonization. Anytime a, a, a colony was, was established as part of the kingdom, they always sent a representative to set up shop. Not you. They didn't let nobody from the country because you didn't know how the kingdom was operating. So what God did, he sent Jesus, and Jesus said, I'm going to send you another comforter. God never left us without a representative. And then when the Holy Spirit came, he's the one to teach us how the colony or how the kingdom is operating. So that the colony is operating just like the kingdom. Amen? The representative here, here came from there to tell us how the kingdom ought to be operating. And how to please the king. Okay? So in democracy, worship do not exist. We don't worship the president, senators, Congress. You know, we don't, governor of the state. We don't worship them. You, you shouldn't be. Now, some people do. Some people worship the government. And that is totally out of whack because how can you worship the government when the government is you? Because the people elected the person in office, and the person in office represents the people. Well, the king, don't he represents the people, but he's himself. Nobody voted him in, and nobody votes him out. And whatever he chooses to do, he, he, if he needs to change the law, he could change the law. Don't need to go to no Congress. His word is law. Now, let's look at number three. This is going to shock you. The only message that Jesus preached was the message of the kingdom of God. I'm going to give you some scripture, then I want to tell you some stories, okay? Let's look at Matthew 4.23. When Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. Matthew 9.35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. There it is again. And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Notice what he's doing. He's preaching the gospel and he's doing something. He's preaching the gospel and he's doing something. Over in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. And after John was put in prison, Jesus came from Galilee Preaching the gospel of the kingdom, saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Very important. Repent and believe in the gospel. And then in Luke 4, 43, Jesus said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, because for this purpose have I been sent. 
Did you hear what he said? He said the purpose he was sent was to preach the kingdom of God. And basically, he's saying, I'm here to reconnect heaven and earth. I'm here to restore what was lost. So Jesus never, listen to me carefully, Jesus never preached faith. He just told them about their faith. Oh, you little faith. You have great faith. You have no faith. All he did was told them about their faith. He never preached healing. There is no sermon that Jesus preached on healing. He just healed people. Are you listening to me? He never preached about being born again. He had one conversation with a man named Nicodemus. It wasn't with the crowd. It was with Nicodemus. And he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He didn't preach to a crowd salvation. He, did, he didn't preach deliverance. He just delivered people. You listening? Okay. I thought I'd get your attention on that. So Jesus simply, number four, Jesus' preaching concerning the kingdom of heaven served three purposes. Number one, to reconnect us to God's kingdom, which Abraham broke away from. And in, 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 when, 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 in, in colonization, when, when you're connected to a kingdom and you break away from something, it's called independence. So when America broke away from Great Britain, it received this independence. And every 4th of July, that movie, Independence, come on. <laughs> and they show it around. I don't care. It, that thing be coming on more time. I've seen Will Smith, I don't know, you know. Him and, him and the fat lady singing in that cigar. You know, no, no. In, that's independence. That's a break. Anytime there's an independence from something, that means you, there's a cut. There's a separation. There's a severing. There's a disconnect. And so when the United States disconnected from, from Great Britain, it no longer received any supply. They no longer received any help. You're listening. Now, you, let's look at this so we can better understand Jesus' message concerning the kingdom. Before America received its independence, uh, there were colonies, 13 colonies that belonged to Great Britain. And, and so many of the people came from Great Britain to, to escape religious persecution. That's, that's why, they, and they moved to what they call a new world. They call us a new world. And when they came to this new world, they began setting up uh, colonies and, 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 and people began to flourish. Well, what happened, just a real short view, a synoptic view, uh, Great Britain entered into a war, French and Indian War, and when they went into the French and Indian War, at the conclusion of that war, because the war took place on American soil, the British wanted to tax the colonies to make them pay for the expense of the war. Kind of like what we're doing today. Stuff going on that we didn't cause, and you want me to pay for it? And anytime somebody say a raise in taxes, don't just a few people get upset. <laughs> a whole bunch of folk get upset. More taxes. And then when they tell you, you get less deductions. <laughs> That's a double whammy. See, sometimes the, the government, sometimes we got to watch. I love, our, I love the country. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't love everything that we do here. I don't agree with everything. Now, I, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else in this world. Thank you, Jesus. I would rather stay here, try to fix this country, than try to go somewhere else and start one. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I got a, I got a jump start here. <laughs> but when, when, when they tax you more and give you less, people, sometimes, you know, we get snowballed. We got to wake up. 
don't forget, we put people in power. But the thing is, if you put them in, there's a system to get them out. I ain't mentioning no names. I'm just saying this is how this system works because the people are the one who has the voice. But when the people don't exercise their voice and something don't happen some, the way you want and it goes contrary, there's nobody to blame but you. Israel didn't have nobody to blame but themselves when they went into slavery because God told them, well, you want a king, here's what a king does. And so, so, so now we see the, 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 in, in, here in America a colonization. And, and now the, the, the colonies, uh-uh, they say, oh, no, we, we, we're tired of this stuff. They chose to separate from Great Britain. And doing so, anytime there's a separation, there's a fight. When you get married and there come a separation, there's going to be a fight. I don't care. We just love each other, so this is going to be a peaceful separation. It's going to be peaceful until the judge say how much she get. <laughs> and then all peace go out the window then. Hold up, judge. That's half of my money. Oh, we're going to fight about this. See, now, now the fight's on because it's, it's going to impact your livelihood. So anytime there's a separation, and so this war went on, and because this war, we, we have what we call today our Independence Day, Fourth of July Independence Day. And we have our independence because we've separated. We're no longer connected to the kingdom. Now, let me show you that I gave you that because I want to give you this. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. First lady. <laughs> First lady said, Genesis what? I said, okay. That's whenever you want to know something from the past, all you got to do is say what? And, but only first lady do that, y'all. Don't y'all do that. <laughs> now, Genesis chapter 3, verse number 1. Now, watch here. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, God has indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But now, understand, she's quoting a law. She, the, the law was set by a king because she's in a kingdom. Now, at this particular time, the heaven and earth is connected. They're under God's rule. And Adam under God. Adam, God had already given Adam dominion. I'm going to talk about that dominion in just a minute. He gave Adam dominion over everything of this earth, didn't he? He had authority. That made him the governor. Just like the Holy Spirit governs, he was the governor of this planet. But he was under the authority of the king. But they were connected. And you notice something right now. There's no lack. Adam and Eve, were, they were now killing, the, killing goats and chasing down sheep to get something to eat. Nothing was dying in the kingdom. There was no death, no sorrow. There was no need. Why? Because the king, all my needs are met according to, you got to understand the terminology. That's, that's, that's the king rule. Under the king rule, my needs are met. Under my rules, I got to meet my own needs because I've separated from the kingdom. Those who are not connected to God are out there fitting for themselves. And they can't win. Because in any society, the dominant people rule that community. The dominant people rule. Example, sometimes you see the neighborhoods change. Neighborhoods change because the dominant people, it's their culture that's going to come forth. It's going to dominate that particular community. Now, I don't care who was there first. It's the dominant, uh, uh, the dominant culture is going to rule that community. In this world, Satan is a dominant culture. And because he is a dominant culture and because he is a god of this world... He rules this world, a world system. And if you're under the world system, you're subject to him. You cannot lose. You cannot win. But when we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, we're no longer bound by the authority of Lucifer. Amen. All right, now let's finish reading this. 
So here he's telling her, he said, look, if you eat the fruit, you should not surely die. Then the servant said to the woman, you should not surely die, for God knows that the day, verse number four, the day you eat, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and she ate. She also gave it to her husband, Adam, and he ate. So here the governor was listening to the whole conversation and didn't say nothing. The one who had all the authority, he had dominion, he had the power. He had the right to say, shut up. Stop talking to my wife. He had the authority to do that, but he did not. And he sit there and listen. Now, everything's, still, everything's still cool right now. Adam is about to mess up here. And so what, what she did is a woman saw that it was good. He had to make you wise. And then he says in verse number seven, then the, the eyes of both of them were open. Listen, people, they weren't blind. What does it mean their eyes were open? And they saw something that they never have seen before. And when they saw it, they didn't like what they saw. And that's what Satan wanted them to see. And they knew that they were naked. And they so fixed it. Here we go. Fend it for yourself. Not under God's rule no more. You're under your own rule. They sowed fig leaves together and made themselves covering, not knowing that the fig leaves are going to wither. <laughs> they didn't have that knowledge yet because they've never seen death. Nothing never died. And so, I mean, this is a pretty good size fig leaves. Come on, give it to them. You know, they could have little fig leaves. They took them all day to put that thing together. <laughs> so they sowed fig leaves together. And, and, and they never seen that. And the Lord called Adam and said, where are you? He shifted to another kingdom. So God said, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Fear is not part of God's kingdom. He was, I was afraid because I was naked. Nakedness is not part of God's kingdom. He said, and I hid myself, and hiding is not part of God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, you're transparent. But in the kingdom, you got to hide. In, in Satan's kingdom, you got to hide stuff. And you, so y'all had to watch it because he starts start you hiding little things. Then pretty soon you start hiding other things. Anytime you have to hide something from somebody, you're operating in the wrong kingdom. Then he says, oh, I, I, I hid myself. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? That was the law. The man said to the woman, the man said, the woman you gave me, God. He shifted the blame. Uh, the woman whom you gave to me? In other words, if you didn't give it to me, I wouldn't have been in this mess. The woman you gave me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Well, that's true, but didn't you tell God you were sitting there right there listening to the lie of Satan and you didn't tell her not to eat? Didn't tell the whole story. And sometimes that's the way people are in this kingdom over here. They don't tell the whole truth. Even when they go to court, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do and get up and lie. <laughs> we already know that because we saw a whole bunch of folk going to jail right now. <laughs> but that's their nature. The nature is the lie. Now, I know people say it, but it's not true for everybody. All politicians are not liars. All politicians are not liars, but all liars are politicians. <laughs> now, there is a difference on that. I, I say all politicians are not liars, but all liars are politicians. Trying to get something for nothing. Trying to get over on somebody. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. I just wonder if I keep going tonight. Uh, or should I, should I, all right. And, and so, so what, what happened? He says, so let's drop down now to verse number 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above all the cattle and, 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 and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, 
and you shall eat the dust of the ground. I will put enmity between you and the woman, etc. Then he says in verse number 16 to the woman, he says, I will multiply your seed in, in, in sorrow and in conception and pain. You're going to bring forth children. And, and then he said, then Adam said, then Adam to Adam, he said, because you have have heeded to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, you should not eat of it. Eat of it. Curse shall be the ground. Now, God is, the curse is on the earth now. And the curse is on the earth simply because Adam exercised his independence to make his own decision. He made his own choice. He felt like he had the right to say yea or nay and, or, or say nothing, and he exercised that right, which brought him his independence from God, separated us. And God had no right into the earth realm. God was cut off. Remember the king, when kingdom and colonies? The earth is a colony or was a colony of heaven. That's what God intended. God never intended for you to go to heaven. I can see on social media, what? That's blasphemy. No, God never intended for you to go to heaven because he didn't make you to go to heaven. He made you to stay on this earth. That's what he intended us to do. And when we, when we rapture up or get caught up or whatever happens, we, we do go to heaven for a period of time. But do you know where he's going to put you? Right back down on this earth. Because we were made for the earth. The earth was made for us. And this is where we're supposed to rule and reign. The earth is ours. But we've been disconnected. And Jesus came and said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What? He said, I come to reconnect you all. I come to put you back in relationship with God. I come to give you something that you have never had before. So now look at Genesis 1.26. I know I'm giving you a lot here. Hang on. Stay with me. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Now the word dominion has several meanings. It means territory. Watch this. What dominion have? He said, let them have dominion. Let them have territory. Let them have dominion. Let them have reign or region. Let them have dominion, another word is authority. He says, and let them have dominion, another word is colony. When you look up dominion, you'll see the word colony. So what is God saying? He's saying, let their territory be like the territory in heaven. Let what you do on earth be identical to what God is doing in heaven. Because the colony is an extension of the kingdom. Of God's kingdom. And so we see this in Matthew 6 and 10. Go to Matthew 6 and 10. When we look at the Lord's prayer, when he gave the disciples prayer, watch what he says. He says, your kingdom come. That was what Jesus prayed to the disciples. He said, this is how you pray. Your kingdom comes. Oh, the kingdom wasn't here physically yet. He says, your will be done where? How? That's a colony. That's an extension. He says, let whatever is happening in heaven, let it happen on earth. So when Jesus went out preaching the kingdom, healing the sick, why? Because there's no sick in heaven. When Jesus was laying on of hands and, 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 and casting out demons, why would he cast out demons? Ain't no demons ruling in heaven. Do you understand that? All he was trying to tell us is, look, whatever you're doing on earth, it should mimic what's already happening in heaven. And then he says, you are the children of God, which means whatever God is doing, his kids are supposed to be doing right down here. If God has no lack in heaven, there should be no lack down here on this earth. Not as far as you're concerned. But it just don't happen because we have a right. It's not going to happen just because God said it. There's some things that we have to do. We have to do as 
godly men and women, we have to do as those who imitate God. There's things that we have to do to see that these come to pass, and that is obey the law of the kingdom. We follow whatever God says. When we follow that, then, then goodness and mercy shall follow you when? Goodness and mercy, it didn't say sometime, it said periodically. It says it will follow you all the days of your life. And David said this, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just We just sing the song, forever. Worshiping forever. And so when we look at the word, now I want to go to the word dominion. God told uh, Adam in 126, he says, let him have, uh, uh, and let's make him in our image. I'll deal with that next week. He says, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. The word dominion, we talked about, means territory, reign, authority, and it means colonize. The word dominion also means reign and rules. It means that you are a king over a territory. That's what it means when he gave Adam. Uh, all of us, uh, uh, according to the word of God, we're kings, and we are, he has made us rulers. You are kings, and you are rulers. In 1 Timothy uh, 6 and 12, it says this, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life, which you were called. You were made the good confession in the, present, in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who testified the good uh, confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep the commandment without stain or reproach, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the proper time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the king of what? Kings. Large king, large K, little K. He's a king of kings. He's the king. Who do you think the kings are? You are, yes. You are. Then you have to ask, your que- ask the question, then why aren't we living like kings? What's happening that we're not living according to the kings that he has made us? Not we ourselves. He made us kings and priests in this earth. Kings of authority, priests, uh, is, 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 uh, concerning worship. We worship him. So as kings in this world, it's to mean we need to step into our rightful place because the kingdom of God is in you and he's, he has developed himself or, or, or placed himself inside of us so that we can step out into this world and rule in authority. It don't mean you're running around telling people what to do. It means that we don't allow the enemy to take from us what God has given to us. Is that it means that we become proper representatives of God. We act like who God act like so that the world can see that we are different, that they can know what God looked like and what God wants from them. You cannot tell the world how God will meet all your needs and you're scraping the bar- bottom of the barrel. That is not kingdom living. That's not where God wants you to be. It don't mean you're not going to have challenges. It don't mean you're not going to have hardships. But you should have the faith to know that it's not going to be like this all the day. I will rise to the top. I have to rise to the top because I'm a child of the king. And in the kingdom of heaven, this is not going on. Therefore, I don't accept it in this earth. That's what God is saying. He didn't say you're not going to come up against challenges. That's the time, I mean, we talked about it. We, we, we look back and we laugh at it, but it wasn't funny then. I mean, our, di- our, di- our dinner was popcorn and Kool-Aid. I mean, kids, didn't, they didn't know nothing. They thought we were just having fun. What we're going to have? Oh, we're just going to have some popcorn and Kool-Aid, maybe some tuna fish sandwiches. Yeah! They all happy. We didn't tell we were broke. We didn't tell oh, we're poor. We didn't have, there's nothing in the refrigerator. Don't go there. You can't. There's nothing for you to eat. Mommy and daddy don't make enough money to feed you. We're about to broadcast that because we depended on heaven. We decided that we don't have a choice. And so we, we chose, the only choice we had was to serve the king. And the king was responsible for taking care of us. When, when you all seem like y'all getting out of hand or something go crazy, I said, Lord, these are your people. 
Now my Adam culture comes out. <laughs> no, I said, Lord, these are your people. You just sent me here to minister to them and live before them. That's all I can do. I'm not going to try, try to uh, lose my mind solve, trying to solve your problem. Solving your problem is not my problem. That is not my problem. God is a problem solver. And when I try to solve your problems, I'm stepping out of line. I'm out of my place. And so, oh, let me get oh, number five, and then I'll stop here. So, uh, and, and, and when Jesus said the kingdom of God, he said, you, your kingdom come, that will be done. It's always been God's intention. Let me give you this and we'll stop. It's always God's intention for us to take charge of this planet, to dominate it and make it just like heaven. Do you know you can have heaven on earth? You can. God made it so we can have heaven on earth. Even in the midst of hell, you can have heaven on earth. Because in the midst of challenges, in the midst of trials, you can still have peace. Yes. And where is peace come from? Peace does not come from the world. The world don't give you peace. It'll give you a peace, but it doesn't give you peace. God gives us peace. Yes. And we can have peace in the midst of a storm. It doesn't matter. Heaven, the kingdom of heaven message that Jesus preached to us, when you go back and start reading it, go back through the Gospels. You need to read this again. And when Jesus kept preaching about the kingdom, he never preached a message. And he said, well, you know, we're going to talk about divine healing. No, he just did it. What he preached was kingdom living. He preached a culture, a culture on how to live right, a culture on how to treat people. That's a culture, the culture on how to be merciful, a culture on justice. That's what Jesus was preaching. He preached a culture, morals and ethics, integrity, and character. And, and those who are walking in integrity, they were laying hands on the sick and they were recovering. They didn't have to preach a healing message. You, you, don't find in, you, don't find, you don't find no apostle start preaching on a healing message. They preached Jesus. And when people needed healing, they just did it, just like Jesus did. People, we got, a, we got a little ways to go here to be able to step up. If somebody need healing and, and you, don't to, you don't have to give them a healing message. Well, you know what? If, you, if the Bible says there's three steps to healing, step number one, you got to do this. And step number two over here is step number three. Why don't you just go and heal them? Just shut your mouth and go and heal them. I think they'll be grateful. Because they're not going to understand what you're saying anyway. How can the world understand what we're saying? It's spiritually discerned. They can't understand it. So our job is to preach the kingdom, live the kingdom, do what Jesus did, talk the way he did, walk the way he did. And be holy because I am holy. And when we live in that holiness, then all those other things, they just happen automatically. Because now we're mimicking and imitating, amen, our Heavenly Father. We're mimicking and imitating Jesus who's the healer. He's a bomb of Gilead. Praise the Lord. Like I told you, there's some information. There's some good information in that. Praise the Lord. And if you catch hold of that information and you let that sink into your heart, wait a minute. I'm a child of the king. God set this world up as a colony of heaven. And I'm part of a greater community. He sent a representative down here to teach me, the Holy Spirit. And if I listen to the Holy Spirit, then I'll be to do exactly what's being done in heaven. That's going to broaden my, my mind and broaden my heart. I see people different now. I act toward them differently. Why? Because I understand what I'm supposed to do as a citizen of heaven and as an heir and joint heir with Christ. Amen. So, so now when we hear that word king, you, you always sing that song, so be, that beautiful that last song about the king. And was, they, I heard the word king mentioned in a, in a couple more songs. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. I was just doing everything I can to sit in that, stay in that seat and just hold on, praise the Lord, because I'm ready to fly. <laughs> not, not like the other guy I believe I could fly. I really mean fly. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking flying for the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't believe I can fly. I know I can fly. Amen. And the only thing that holds me down right now is this body, gravity. If you take this body off, psh, this body, I soar like an eagle. Y'all understand? You got your gravity shoes on right now. But when you step out that gravity suit, you fly. Amen. There's no boundaries to you because you're a spiritual being in a, in a physical body. 
That's what you are, a spiritual being in a physical body. And you were born to soar. Praise God. Born to soar. Born to fly. Glory to God. Reach heights and, 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 and no limitations. That's what you really are. But right now we're in this suit. As long as we're in this suit, it meant we all can be in one place at one time. Isn't God good? Yes. Come on, give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> praise the Lord. God is good. <laughs> Amen. Everybody sitting all over the building, you've been so great. Praise God. I know you've been standing already, but I just want to pray with you, pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for every person that's here under the sound of my voice, present, and those via social media. However, amen, we're present. We thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I just thank you that today we come to realize that there's a bigger picture here that Satan does not want us to see. It's a bigger picture that he doesn't want us to know. He doesn't want us to know that we're children of the king. He doesn't want us to know that we're heirs and joint heirs with Christ. He doesn't want us to know that we have rights. He doesn't want us to know that Jesus gave us back rights and privileges that were stolen from us. And we have a right to retrieve them because of redemption. Jesus, you paid the price. You redeemed us from the curse of the law. And therefore, you return to us those things that God has given to us when we confess you as our Lord and Savior. I thank you, Father, that yes, we have authority. We have our dominion. And Lord, help us to see ourselves, see our families, not as we saw them before, not as we have seen them with our natural eyes, but we see them spiritually. Help the brothers, the men to know that God has made you ruler over your own household and that we are to rule our household well as good servants of Jesus Christ, ruling them with kindness and mercy and gentleness, the softness of our voice in the name of Jesus. No, oh God, I just want to thank you and praise you that we all become servants one to another, walking in brotherly love, walking in brotherly kindness. Let love be our guide in the name of Jesus. Love without dissimulation. Lord, love without no end. Love without any restrictions in Jesus' name. Father, I just want to thank you. What you have done, Jesus, by coming and reconnecting us with our Heavenly Father. And Father, because of this connection, all of our needs are met. I pray this morning that every knee over every person in this congregation, those watching via social media, every need is met in the name of Jesus because we know that we have reconnected with the Father, not our will, but your will be done in our life. Now we give you thanks and we give you praise. And those who are here or view in social media who haven't given their heart to the Lord, simply by asking Jesus to come into your heart. It's so simple. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I choose to follow you. I no longer follow my own will or my own passion. I choose to follow after God. And Father, because I've made that decision, I received Jesus into my heart. I am born again. I'm part of the kingdom. <clears throat> Jesus said, except you're born again, you won't even see the kingdom. No way you're going to get into the kingdom. You can't even see it. But praise God, through the bloodshed of Jesus Christ, by the acknowledgement and confession of our faith, we have access to God. Now we give you praise and we give you thanks for everyone who have confessed you and who will continue to walk up right before you in Jesus' marvelous, matchless name. To our Lord of lords and to our King of kings, be all the glory and honor forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord one more clap. And you may be seated. Well, hallelujah.